Uh, today we will uh, start our first uh, lecture about uh, respiratory therapy technique uh, for uh, our colleagues uh, who are working in uh, in primary healthcare and secondary healthcare centers in Hadramaut and everywhere. Uh, I will try as uh, easy as possible uh, to uh, to speak um, uh, in uh, uh, not go in details in deeps. Uh, our idea was at the beginning to uh, speak about the COVID-19 and the ventilation um, modes for the COVID-19 patient, but uh, uh, from our colleagues in Hadramaut asking ask us to speak uh, about the basics at the beginning before we go deep. Um, I think there is no difference between the basics uh, of the respiratory therapy techniques and uh, uh, treating of the COVID-19 patient with the respiratory uh, techniques. Um, I want to hint here a very important, I will speak about adult patient. I will speak in general. I will try to send to you my experience that I built in my, um, in my uh, practice, uh, the references for each single work, you will find it at the end of the lecture. This lecture, I will send to you in the PDF war, in the PDF file uh, on, the WhatsApp, uh, um, on the WhatsApp groups. And I will ask from Dr. Omar to send it to you on the Facebook site uh, of Madrat Hawarm um, al Corona. Bismillah, we start. Omar, why might have a good Okay. Uh, the aim of um, our lecture develop a logical algorithm to evaluate how move from type of therapy to other one uh, on a strong base. The basic knowledge for the respiratory therapy techniques is critically important for all branches of medicine. No one in the medical field allowed to think ever that he or she does not need uh, this uh, knowledge. Uh, these uh, notes are only for adult patient and if may be applied, also for the patient suffering from COVID-19 with a few modifications according to the need of patient, as everyone knows that we are still learning from the COVID-19 patient. COVID-19 patient is not other than the acute respiratory stress patients, which uh, will be mentioned frequently in this lecture. Uh, to understand the pathology and to understand how to deal with the mechanical ventilation system, we have to understand at the beginning the anatomy of physiology and the physiology of the respiratory respiration and gas exchange. The purpose of the respiratory system is to perform gas exchange. Primary ventilation provides air to alveoli for this gas exchange process at the respiratory membrane where the alveolar and capillary wall meets, gases move across the membranes with oxygen entering the bloodstream and carbon dioxide exiting. We have two types of respiration, external respiration and internal respiration. External respiration simply is the exchange of gases between the blood plasma and RBC and the alveolus with the environmental air. And, uh, here, as you see in this uh, uh, diagram, you uh, we see the RBC. Uh, we uh, the CO2 delivered to the alveolus in three forms. First form is the CO2, which is dissolved in the plasma. The second form of CO2, which is which comes from the bicarbonate, which is the uh, uh, destroyed or or dissolved or. or um, lose it from the uh, bicarbonate by carbon anhydrase or the uh, CO2, which is compound to the uh, hemoglobin. Um, and the exchange with the oxygen, with oxygen which will be dissolved in the plasma or with, uh, the oxygen which will be compound to the hemoglobin to, go, to move to form the uh, oxyhemoglobin. In, um, in both processes, we will see the hydrogen ion is essential to um, to uh, equivalent the uh, pH level of the plasma. Uh, the internal res respiration is the 
other side uh, of the or the other the second type of the respiration which is the exchange of gases between the tissue cells and the rbc and blood plasma the internal respiration is the gas exchange that occurs at the level of body tissue similar to uh, external respiration internal respiration also occur as simple diffusion due to partial pressure gradient however the partial pressure gradient are opposite of those present at the respiratory membrane the partial pressure of extra oxygen in tissue is low about 40 millimeter mercury because oxygen is continuously used for cellular respiration in contrast the partial pressure of oxygen in the blood about 100 millimeter mercury please this number memorize them as your name because these number are very essential um, at the end of this lecture to understand the exchange of gases in the pathological situation uh, uh, this creates pressure gradient that causes oxygen to dissociate from hemoglobin diffused out of the blood across the interstitial space and into the tissue hemoglobin that has little oxygen bound to it loses much of its Dr. Saleh, yeah. Prof. Saleh, the sound is weak, you say. Is it possible to lower the sound a little bit? I'll get the Is the sound now better? Is it better now? Is the sound now better, Hassan? Yes, MashaAllah. I can't hear anybody. I said Hello? yes, it's, it's, it's better. Carry on. I think I have the problem. Can you hear me? Yes, Dr. Saleh. Yes. Maybe. Is it better? Yes. Before, before it was better. Now it's just. Could you. Could okay. you before it was better. Could, yeah, before little. How is it now? How is it now? It's okay. Better. Uh, try yeah. to. To speak slowly, then maybe the internet connection is okay. is not that good. Okay. Slowly and loudly. Okay. Considering Thanks. considering that cellular respiration continuously produces carbon dioxide, the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is lower in the blood than it is in the tissue, causing carbon dioxide to diffuse out of the tissue cross interstitial fluid into the blood. It is then carried back to the lung, either bound to hemoglobin dissolved in the plasma or in converted form. By the time <clears throat> blood returned to the heart, the partial pressure of oxygen has returned to about 40 millimeter mercury and then partial pressure of carbon dioxide has returned to about 45 millimeter mercury please 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 remember these number in the future remember them they are very essential to understand many topics later on and the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide is returned to 45 millimeter mercury the blood is then pumped back to the lung to be oxygenated once again during external respiration. Yes. Um, anatomy of the lungs and the alveoli are very important also to understand. We have we should have an, a free way for the air from the environment through the nose and throat and trachea and bronchus and bronchioles to the smaller units to the alveolus. 
as everybody knows, the alveoli uh, contain, uh, formed from a single layer of endothelium, which lined with a mucous membrane, which is able to dissolve the gases, the CO2 and O2, to allow the exchange through diffusion process, simple diffusion process between the capillary, which came and go to the pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins. The air, as everybody knows, composed mainly of nitrogen and 21% of oxygen, most of oxygen in the environmental air produced through the algae, the pahalib. Um, the alveoli, as we say, it is in a secular form. It is the main unit where the gas exchange happened. Uh, this alveolus, as we say, composed of endothelium, single layer of endothelium, and the endothelium of the capillary of the pulmonary vasculature are bounded together through the and a membrane in the in the in between and the diffusion and the and the transport of the gases between the space alveolar space and in uh, and the in the vascular spaces through the simple diffusion system this is a very important info the perfusion of the bronchus and the lung through the oxygen and nutrients, not from the pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery, as many of us know, no, the, the perfusion and the main supply of the blood for the lung and bronchus is, the, is from bronchial artery, which arises from the aortic arch and thoracic aorta. And draining of the blood and deoxygenated blood from the trachea, bronchus, and lung is through the azygous vein and the hemiazygous vein, which is draining in the superior and inferior vena cava. But muscles of the respiration, we have two groups the inspiration muscles, we have an accessory and principal muscles. Accessory muscles is sternocleidomastoid and scalenous groups, which are going to elevate, elevate the ribs, the clavicle, upward to allow the inspiration process. Principal muscles are the intercostal, external and internal intercostal muscles, which are innervated from the intercostal nerves. We will come later on how much that important. The muscle of expiration, we are talking about the intercostal and intercostal internal and external muscles and the abdominal, uh, rectus abdominis and the quadratus lumborum muscle, which pulls the ribs downward with diaphragm to allow the expiratory uh, uh, function. Neurophysiological respiration is uh, neurophysiology of the respiration is one of the much important functions which have to be understood. Anatomically, anatomically, the respiration controlled from three main nerve areas. High from the brain, from the brain, this is the voluntary movement, and two from the brain stem bones and medulla oblongata, where is the involuntary movement, three peripheral, how? We will explain this in detail. Uh, the respiratory center, the series of paired and functional related autonomic nuclei located bilaterally in the reticular formation of the brain stem. This control center, consists of medullary rhythmicity area containing the dorsal respiratory groups, formerly inspiratory area. Dorsal respiratory group, they are responsible for the inspiratory function. 
and the dentra respiratory group, which are responsible for the expiratory area or expiratory function. The pontine respiratory center formally is pneumotex, pneumotex and uh, our apneotic areas. This collection of neurons cooperate to regulate the rate of depth of breathing as an involuntary unconscious activity in response to the physiological need of the body for the oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange for blood acid base balance. Medullary rhythmicity area, a collection of neurons in the reticular formation within the medulla oblongata involved in establishing for modifying the pattern for breathing within this area are two key components. One, the interrespiratory groups, which is inspiratory area, which autorhythmically stimul stimulates spontaneous ventilation, resting or tidal breathing apnea, and two, the dorsal respiratory groups, which is formerly expiratory area, which responds to situation beyond those of resting or tidal breathing apnea to alter pattern for ventilation in response to the physiological need of the body for oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange for blood acid balance. We will come to this function later on when we speak about the respiratory acidosis and respiratory alkalosis and where they affect the, uh, where, which neurological center are responsible for this. Those are re respiratory groups, formerly the inspiratory area, the collection of motor neurons forming nuclei within the dorsal portion of the medullary rhythmicity area for the reticular formation within the medulla oblongata, which are involved in altering the pattern of ventilation in response to the physiological needs of the body for the oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange for blood acid base balance. These neurons stimulate neurons in the ventral respiratory group to achieve those effects. They are responsive to sensory information from chemoreceptor and mechanoreceptor, which we will talk about now. The ventral respiratory groups for the expiratory area, the collection of autorhythmic motor neuron forming nuclei within the ventral portion of the medullary rhythmicity area of the reticular formation within the medulla oblongata. This group contains both inspiratory and expiratory neurons. The inspiratory neurons stimulate the diaphragm and external intercostal intercostals for approximately two seconds to cause inspiration. And then the antagonist expiratory neurons fire for approximately three seconds to permit passive or stimulate active expirations. Thereby, inspiratory and expiratory neurons cooperate in the negative feedback control relationship, setting the basic rhythm of, <clears throat> of respiration, spontaneous ventilation, resting or tidal breathing apnea, Ventral reticular group neurons may be influenced by dorsal respiratory group for ventilation in situation other than eupnea. Pontine respiratory center, formerly a pneumotaxic, pneumotaxic and apneotic area, a collection of neurons in the reticular formation within the bones which limit inspiratory duration by sending inhibitory signal to the medulla, to the medullary rhythmicity 
area reducing duration for inspiratory impulses causing shorter cycle which increases ventilation rate. This pontine respiratory neuron receives input from higher brain center and peripheral receptor and their output fine tunes the breathing rhythm during activities such as speaking, sleeping, and exercises. And that's why the patient who have an pathology in the bones getting an a hypercapnia massively and excessively. Cortical influences the action of higher conscious center in the cerebral cortex, which permit voluntary control of ventilation by in interacting with by interacting with and overriding the autonomic center in the medullary rhythmicity area. Examples including the control of ventilation during speech, singing, as well as deliberate forceful inspiration, expiration, or attempt the breath of holding pain and certain emotional states may also influence the air, the rate of depth of ventilation um, in this station, subhanAllah. Central chemoreceptor, sensory neurons located with the CNS, usually in the brain stem or hypothalamus, which responds to chemical stimuli, a type of interoreceptor sensitive to concentration change of the variety of molecules in the blood or cerebrospinal fluid. Peripheral chemoreceptor, sensory neuron located outside the CNS. This is the third, the third level now. Outside the CNS, usually in the wall of the blood vessel, like aortic body, carotid body, uh, juxtaglomerular apparatus, uh, which respond to the chemical stimuli, a type of interoreceptor sensitive concentration change of variety of molecule in the blood or other body fluid. That's why the pattern of breathing with the respiratory acidotic patient or alkalotic patient or metabolic acidotic and alkalotic patient that, that change the, the respiratory uh, mode. Uh, carotid body, a group of the peripheral chemoreceptor located near to the bifurcation of the carotid arteries, which monitor change in oxygen and carbon dioxide content and pH of the blood and rely that sensory information to the hypothalamus and brain stem to help them control cardiovascular and respiratory function. Other cells in the carotid body respond to the blood temperature and certain chemical and certain uh, chemical and uh, cyanide. Uh, okay, aortic body, aortic body, a group of the peripheral chemoreceptor located in the arch of the aorta, which monitor change in oxygen CO2 content and pH of the blood and rely that sensory information to the hypothalamus and brainstem to help them control cardiovascular and respiratory function. Baroreceptor, uh, baroreceptor by, by the children is totally the opposite. By the children is totally the opposite. Dr. Hassan can, uh, can tell us maybe later more about this. A type of mechanoreceptor, a specialized sensory end organ or sensory neuron which responds to the mechanical stimuli such tension, stretching in the wall of the blood vessel or other tubular organ, important sense, important cells, sorry, important sensors in the regulation of blood pressure. Inflation reflects a relatively rapid and predictable motor response by the skeletal muscle responsible for ventilation, which occur when stretch receptors in the visual pleura bronchioles and alveoli are stimulated by being stretched. The motor response helps regulate the depth 
of breathing over stretching causes apnea, bronchial dilation, increased heart rate, and peripheral vasoconstriction. Increased PO2 and decreased PCO2 and drop of hydrogen cause alkalosis or interact discourage ventilation to return more CO2 and therefore to restore normal CO2 level. Decreased PO2, increased PCO2 and rise hydrogen acidosis all interact to encourage ventilation to uh, blow off the CO2 and therefore restore the CO2 level. This leads me to choose this title to explain how the respiration works and how are we able to reset the respiration of our patient. We want to start with the main thing, which is the oxygen therapy. Receiving patient complaining of the breathlessness, acute respiratory distress syndrome, COPD, COVID-19, pneumonia, and so on. Let us start think how to develop therapy, steps to treat the patient in different level of the severity. Oxygen therapy, all critically ill patients should receive additional inspired oxygen on a more, not less, is this philosophy. Principles. One, high flow, high concentration oxygen should be given to any acutely dyspneic hypoxemic patient until accurate titration can be performed using arterial blood gas analysis arterial blood gas analysis. Please memorize this value as your name. Normal value of the arterial blood gas analysis as follow for the patient who are living on the sea level, the patient who are above 3,000 feet over the sea level have slightly different values and COPD patient. We are talking now about the normal patients who are living on the sea level. Partial pressure oxygen between 75 to 100 millimeter mercury in the arterial blood gases. Partial pressure of the carbon dioxide 38 to 42 millimeter mercury. Arterial blood pH between 7.38 to 7.42. Oxygen saturation, peripheral oxygen saturation 94 to 100%. Bicarbonate is 22 to 28 milliequivalent per liter. As I told you, the patient over 3,000 feet of the sea have a little bit lower oxygen level in the blood. This oxygen therapy can include for low blood oxygen, carbon monoxide toxicity, cluster headache, and to maintain enough oxygen while inhaled anesthesia are getting. Long-term oxygen therapy in is often useful in people with chronically low oxygen, such as for severe COPD patients and cystic fibrosis. Excessively high concentrations can cause oxygen toxicity, such as lung damage or result of the respiratory failure in those who are uh, predisposed. We transmit the oxygen therapy to the patient through the masks. We have three types of masks type of mask, which is nasal cannula, normal mask or face, face mask, face mask with reservoir, and uh, hyper, <coughs> hyperbaric chamber for the monoxide, uh, uh, carbon monoxide toxicity. In general, maintain saturated oxygen, peripheral saturated oxygen over 90%, so preferably more than 95%. Compromises may need to be made during acute or chronic hypoxemia respiratory failure, prolonged severe acute respiratory distress syndrome when lower value may surface provided tissue oxygen delivery is maintained. All patients placed on mechanical ventilation should initially receive receive a high fractionated inspired oxygen until accurate titration 
is performed using arterial blood gas analysis. Please, you can, the, the peripheral, peripheral oximetry can help you, but don't depend it to decide your therapy. You decide the therapy and the furthermore management is the blood gas arterial blood gas analysis. Apart from patient receiving hyperbaric oxygen therapy for carbon monoxide poisoning and diving accident, there no need to maintain supranormal level of the oxygen. Uh, the target oxygen saturation recommended depends on the condition being treated. In most conditions, a saturation of 94 to 96 is recommended, while those at risk carbon dioxide retention, saturations of 88 to 92 percent are preferred. And in those with carbon monoxide toxicity or cardiac risk, they should be high as possible. Um, it is very important for me to mention um, the word carbon dioxide retention for the patient with increased intracranial pressure to get a hyperventilation therapy to reduce the intracranial pressure. Um, cautions. A small proportion of patients in chronic type 2 hypoxemic hypercapnic respiratory failure, I put this table for you, uh, will develop apnea if their central hypoxic drive is removed by supplemental oxygen. However, this is seldom abrupt and period of deterioration and increased drowsiness will alert medical and nurse staff consider either one, Fractionated inspired oxygen reduction of overall condition allows. Non-invasive or invasive mechanical ventilation is fatiguing. Or use respiratory stimulus such as Dexopram, which I, in all my life, just two times used. Uh, corollary is the close supervision of and monitoring of necessary uh, of and monitoring is necessary in all critically ill patients, or you will lose your patient. Type of oxygen mask. Hudson type mask or nasal spectacle give an imprecise fractionated inspired oxygen and should only be used by when hypoxemia is not a major concern for you. It allows to deliver a humidified gas via aqua park system do not deliver an accurate fractionated um, inspired oxygen unless gas flow is recommended level. Uh, the other type of the mask, which is fitted with a venturi valve, uh, responsible accurate to uh, fractionated inspired oxygen between 24% to 60%, except in patients with very high inspired uh, inspired flow rate. These masks do not allow delivery of humidified gas, but are preferable in short-term dyspneic patient as they enable more precise monitoring of the PO2 and fractionated inspired oxygen ratio. Uh, the third type of mask is tight fitting anesthesia mask allow 100% oxygen delivery. It may use manual mechanical ventilation. It is, yeah, accurate. Uh, not comfortable for the alert patient. It may cause face injury if not well positioned on the face. Uh, I am not really much comfortable with this uh, diagram, but the only diagram which I found uh, measuring how the uh, fractionated inspired oxygen throw each type of masks who likes to uh, read it uh, can do with this. Um, indication for oxygen therapy. We have two conditions, chronic and acute conditions. Chronic condition like a COPD patient, um, the occurrence of chronic bronchitis or emphysema, a common long-term effect of smoking who may require additional oxygen to breathe either during 
a temporary worsening of their condition or throughout the day and night. It indicated in people with COPD with arterial oxygen partial pressure less than 55 millimeter mercury or arterial oxygen saturation less than 88% and has been shown to increase lifespan. Uh, oxygen is often prescribed for people with breathlessness in setting and end-stage cardiac respiratory failure, advanced cancer, or neurodegenerative diseases if having relatively normal blood gas level. In a study, 2010, trials from 239 subjects found no significant difference in reducing breathlessness between oxygen and air delivered to the same way. Indication for oxygen therapy. Accurate, acute condition. Oxygen was widely used in emergency medicine, both hospital and emergency medical service, or those giving advanced first aid. In the pre-hospital environment, high flow oxygen is indicated for use in resuscitation, major trauma, reflexes, major bleeding, shock, active convulsion, and hypothermia. It may also indicate it for any other people where their injury or illness has used low oxygen level. Although, in this case, oxygen flow should be moderated to achieve oxygen saturation level based on pulse oximetry with targeted with target level from 94 to 96 in most and 88 to 92 people with COPD. Excessively use oxygen in those who are acutely well, however, increase the risk of death. In 2018 recommendation within the British Medical Journal, where that oxygen should be stopped in saturation are greater than 96% and should not be started in above 90 to 93%. Exceptions were those with carbon monoxide poisoning, cluster headache, attack, and sickle cell diseases and pneumothorax. COVID-19, still a matter of question, if should we give above 93% or not? I don't know. Still a matter of discussion. Summary, oxygen therapy is essential for all patients who does need medical help. Always, all the time, consider systemic cause of respiratory failure during respiratory therapy or oxygen therapy. Consider the past history of the patient who have pulmonary diseases. Non-invasive oxygen therapy, consider for the patient who are able to breathe and able to reach spontaneous peripheral oxygen saturation over 92%, critically ill patient must be closed monitored during oxygen therapy using arterial blood gas analysis, not only pulse oximetry. Different type of face masks uh, to oxygen therapy have different fractionated inspired oxygen nasal cannula, not for patients with lower saturated, <coughs> peripheral, <coughs> peripheral saturated <coughs> oxygen than 92% face mask with reservoir given for tachypneic patient with fractionated in, in inspired oxygen of two liter or room air to avoid acute reduction of the serum CO2. Uh, oxygen therapy can harmful for the patient if the non-invasive oxygen therapy fails to raise the, the uh, peripheral saturated oxygen to 92% or neurological deterioration seen must be switched immediately to the next level of the respiratory therapy. COVID-19 patient might have pneumonia or COPD and or bronchial asthma. Etiology for the respiratory failure. <clears throat> this terminology is very important for me to tell you about it. And please keep it in mind in the future to deal with it, 
to differentiate between the different type of the respiratory failure. AA gradient is the alveolar, alveolar, alveolar arterial gradient, measures the differences between the, the difference between the oxygen concentration in the alveoli and the arterial system. The alveolar arterial gradient has an important clinical utility as it can help narrow the differential diagnosis for hypoxemia. These two diagrams are important to understand this dilemma. Respiratory failure, we have two things, lung failure or pump failure. The pump failure, we talking about the ventilatory failure manifested by hypercapnia increasing the PCO2. Lung failure, gas exchange failure manifested by hypoxemia. The ventilatory support indication, acute ventilatory insufficiency, acute rates of the, of the PSCO2 and significant respiratory acidosis, the PSCO2 is directly proportional to the body's CO2 production and inversely proportional to the alveolar ventilation, Min, minute ventilation minus dead space ventilation. We will come to this terminology. Causes of acute ventilatory insufficiency, respiratory Sinclair depression due to drugs, sedatives, benzodiazepine derivatives, antidepressant, and so on. Cranial pathology causes increased intracranial pressure as we spoke at the beginning of the physiology or pressure over the brain stem. Peripheral neuromuscular diseases like Guillain-Barre syndrome, ischemia gravis, or cervical and thoracic spinal cord pathology will come to this. Therapeutic muscle paralysis as a part of the balanced anesthesia or management of tetanus or status epilepticus. Loose of chest wall integrity, chest trauma, diaphragm rupture, we will come to this also. High CO2 production, like burn patient, sepsis patient, severe agitation patients. Reduced alveolar ventilation, airway obstruction, asthma, acute bronchitis, coronary, atlectasis, pneumonia, pulmonary edema, acute respiratory distress syndrome patient, cardiac failure, pleural pathology, fibrotic lung diseases and obesity, and each one of them has his own characteristic and own failure in the lung and gas exchange problem. Pulmonary vascular diseases like pulmonary embolism, cardiac failure, and acute respiratory distress syndrome. We will come now to the first one. The respiratory central depression due to drug, cranial pathology. This is one of my patients who have a tumor exactly over the bone. And trust that with the instructor. Instead, the tumor is very small, didn't cause any perifocal edema. edema. The patient gets a respiratory depression immediately because the pressure is enough here to stop the breathing function of the medulla oblongata and pumps. This patient have an acute hydrocephalus because of the bleeding in the third ventricle and causes acute increase of the intracranial pressure which press directly on the medulla oblongata and bones and reach the patient to reach the respiratory depression and this diagram is really um, try to, uh, to easy for you to understand this problem. The problem is here, look at this. Here we have the bones and the medulla oblongata. And in this area, we have the respiratory control system, all nuclei in this area. We spoke about this in the physiology, if you go back to the uh, few slides before. Any pressure on this area, loses the control of the mus uh, essential respiratory muscle, accessory respiratory muscle, and the, and the uh, um, inhibitory with stimulatory function of the throat muscles. If anything happens in this area, will affect all these problems and prevent patient 
to allow to breathe at all. Peripheral neuromuscular diseases like Guillain-Barre syndrome, Guillain-Barre syndrome, as everybody know, nobody know until now if it is an, a viral infection or an autoimmune disease, which is characterized by an ascending, ascending uh, uh, polyneuropathy from the low, uh, lower extremities and upper extremities and go upwards through the muscles and to reach to the diaphragm and the uh, respiratory muscles and prevent patient in in some stage to, to breathe. Then you have to intubate the patient and put the patient in the ventilation, the mechanical ventilation, until this disease uh, from uh, a low, uh, from a low uh, result. Uh, other case, these pa two patients of mine, one of them have an, a trauma and got, and got an uh, um, injury of the spinal cord in the fifth, fourth, fifth, and sixth. My, and is the fifth uh, um, segment of the cervical uh, spinal cord where the diaphragm in, uh, mainly uh, innervated. The patient couldn't be able to breathe anymore after that and he does need uh, a tracheostoma to, uh, uh, to be able to breathe. Uh, this is another patient who got an amulitis, which is an, an inflammation of the spinal cord uh, due to a bacterial infection uh, in the spinal canal abscess. Uh, uh, this is a diagram which I really love uh, try to understand uh, why the patient got hypoventilation to hypoxia. We see a clinically uh, rapid shallow respiration, the blood pressure goes down, a skin mucosa pale and cyanotic, headache, hyperkalemia, um, this, uh, dysthymia and drowsiness, dizziness, and this, uh, uh, disorientation, uh, muscle weakness, hyperreflexia, and these are the causes for these things. And we will see the patient hypercapnic, the uh, CO2 in the blood uh, goes more than 48 millimeter mercury, and the uh, uh, pH will be acidotic. Uh, therapeutic muscle paralysis uh, due to anesthesia or treatment of tetanus and treatment of epileptic uh, of the status epilepticus with these drugs or their derivatives, um, logically they are lead to the paralysis of the respiration and respiratory depression. That may, that that's why they need an intubation and mechanical ventilation during the treatment if the dose get over and over. Uh, loss of chest integrity, just like chest trauma or diaphragm rupture. Here we have a patient with a diaphragm rupture and uh, migration of the abdominal uh, cavity organs into the lung, into the thoracic uh, cage, here fly and cyst, uh, and uh, this is a diagram for migration of the abdominal um, organ into the thoracic cavity due to a uh, diaphragm rupture. Um, oxygenation failure. Why the oxygenation could be failed? Hypoxemia is defined by the uh, PO2 less than 11 uh, kPl on the fractionated inspired oxygen more than 0 0.4 may be due to ventilation, perfusion, mismatching. We will come to explain this terminology later on. Reduced ventilation in or preferential perfusion of some lung area, pneumonia, pulmonary edema, pulmonary vasculature, extremely cardiac output, uh, shunt, normal perfusion, but absent of ventilation in some lung zone, pneumonia and pulmonary edema, diffusion limitation, reduced alveolar surface area with normal ventilation like emphysema, uh, reduced inspired oxygen, tension, and altitude and suffocation. Acute ventilation insufficiency. Ventilation perfusion mismatching. Here, <clears throat> in this case, we get an alveolus, venous blood, arterial blood. You got an, a block in the bronchioles, which brings the air to the alveolus. The blood comes and goes without any gas exchanges. Here, with some more 
explanation we got in the virus, bronchioles, and here the gas, uh, the blood. The blood goes here, found no gas, comes deoxygenated and back deoxygenated. This is normal, comes deoxygenated, get oxygen here and go deoxygenated. Here we have a block for the blood which come to the alveolus. Air come inside, but no blood and no uh, gas exchange and uh, hypercapnia is here happened. The shunt, normal perfusion. There is a perfusion here. There is a perfusion, but here is a block. And here we got in a shunt. Shunt, block the airway, blood works. The dead space, the block of the venous blood, the arterial blood is no, no blood go out, but the ventilation is working very well. And this is another diagram explaining the same thing, which is called absolute dead space. Diffuse, the diffusion limitation reduced alveolar space due, due to pneumonia or fluid inside the, uh, inside the lung, inside the alveolus. Five causes of hypoxia. I love this diagram. I think it is it's easy the, uh, uh, the way to understand this. As I told you before, please remember this, this terminology. Alveolar arterial gradient. If the alveolar arterial gradient normal, you have to think this patient have something with the nervous system. The fractionated inspired oxygen is low high altitude, hypoventilation associated with increasing the PCO2. You have to think about sinus depression due to brain stem stroke, narcotic overdose, obesity, hyperventilation, muscular weakness. Increased AA gradient responds to 100% fractionated inspired oxygen. We have hypoxemia or hypoxemia does not correct it. If the hypoxemia corrected, then we have here a dead space, as we spoke before. Most common cause of hypoxemia here is the blockage of the uh, uh, perfusion of the uh, alveoli or anastenotic as uh, stenosis uh, due to asthma and obstructive lung disease, pulmonary embolism, mild uh, alveolar filling diseases, blood, water, pus, and protein. Diffusion impairment, we have here an interstitial lung disease, like emphysema, pulmonary vascular diseases, cardiac output stasis, increased uh, transient time uh, thought, alveolar capillary membrane. Front, which is the opposite thing to the VQ mismatch or deep space, only large shunt, we got the alveoli get blocked, the blood go from artery to venous area without any oxygenation. We have blood, water, pus, protein, alveolar collapse, atelectasis, pleural process, uh, pulmonary arterial venous malformation, and intracardiac shunt. Indication for ventilatory support. Ventilatory support, invasive or non-invasive, should be considered if respiratory rate over 30 per minute. Vital capacity less than 10 to 15 milliliter per minute. PO2 less than 11 kPl on fractionated inspired oxygen more than 0 0.4. PSO2 high with significant respiratory acidosis significant respiratory acidosis, yeah. Uh, dead space to the uh, tidal volume more than 60%. If the patient got a shunt fraction more than 15 to 20%, exhaustion, confusion, severe shock, severe left ventricle failure, raised intracerebral, intracranial pressure. Method of ventilatory support, which we know, everybody knows, continuous mandatory ventilation, 
assist controlled ventilation, intermittent mandatory ventilation, synchronous intermittent mandatory ventilation, pressure support ventilation, non-invasive ventilation, and continuous positive airway pressure, CPAP. Criteria for endotracheal intubation for invasive ventilatory support. This, according to the German school, the English and American school have another criteria, and you could modify them as the patient need. Shouldn't be follow as they as he described this. The Glasgow Home Scale less than seven, and throat reflexes weak or absent. Saturated oxygen less than 90% instead of oxygen therapy. Uh, the, <clears throat> the oxygen in serum less than 55 millimeter mercury and or PCO2 increase over 60 millimeter mercury except with COPD patients. Respiratory rate over 35%, uh, 35 per net. Signs of muscular exhaust, exhausting. Intermittent, intermittent pos, uh, positive uh, perfusion uh, ventilation, description of the ventilators, classification of the mechanical ventilator by the method of cycling from the inspiration to expiration, time cycle. This may be when the present time has elapsed. The volume cycle, present volume delivered. Volume of the gases means yeah. The modern the modern the modern ventilator allow a greater degree of control. You it is like the the, uh, the professional camera when you put in the manual way you can uh, you can deal with each single function alone as the need of the patient. Important notes. In a volume cycled mode. With pressure limitation, the upper pressure alarm limit in set that maximum inspiratory pressure controlled, the ventilator delivers a preset tidal volume unless the lung are non compliant or airway resistance is high. This is useful to avoid high peak airway pressure. The volume cycled mode with time limit. The inspiratory flow is reduced. The ventilator delivers the preset tidal volume unless impossible to the set respiratory rate. If pressure limitation is not available, this is useful to limit peak airway delivered throughout inspiration. I like pressure cycle ventilation. Cycle being determined by, by, uh, by time. Tidal volume is dependent on respiratory compliance and airway resistance. Here, too high peak airway pressure can be avoided. Setting up the mechanical ventilator. If we understand the following uh, terminology and the following uh, uh, setup, it will be for, for us in the future not a problem from where we got this mechanical ventilator and uh, which company produced it because we got the physiology, we understood the terminology, we understood how to set this, we understand our patient, we understand the pathophysiology of the patient and it will be easy to deal with, um, with, the, um, uh, with the numbers and the values which we are going to speak about. Tidal volume. Tidal volume should be between 7 to 10 milliliters per kilogram. The recent data suggests that the lower value of 6 to 7 milliliters per kilogram may be better in severe acute respiratory failure, reducing barotrauma trauma and improving the outcome. In severe airflow limitation, bronchial asthma, acute bronchitis, smaller tidal volume and minute volume may be needed to allow prolonged expiration. The respiratory. 
usually set in according with the tidal volume to provide minute ventilation of 85 to 100 milliliter per kilogram per minute. In time cycled or time cycled mode, the preset of respiratory rate determines the timing of the uh, ventilator cycle. Inspiratory flow. Usually is between 40 to 80 liters per minute. Higher flow is more comfortable for the alert patient. This allows for longer expiration in patients with severe airflow limitation, but maybe higher peak airway pressure. The flow pattern may be adjust on most ventilators. A square waveform, a square waveform, this one, a square waveform is often used to decelerate flow by reduced peak airway pressure. Inspiratory expiratory ratio, a function of respiratory rate. Tidal volume, inspiratory flow, and inspiratory time. The, the inspiratory expiratory ratio, if you set the previous value correctly, will be set from itself uh, and will be automatically measured from the machine itself. Prolonged expiration is useful in severe airflow limitation, while a prolonged inspiratory time is used in the acute respiratory distress syndrome patient, COVID-19 patient, to allow flow reacting alveoli time to flow. Alert patients are more comfortable with shorter inspiratory time and high inspiratory flow rate. Fractionated inspired oxygen. Set according to the arterial blood gas. Yeah. Somebody set it from the beginning on 100% or to 21% or 20%. Please depend on the arterial blood gas. You may, it may be harmful if you underestimate this thing. Airway pressure. Airway pressure, the pressure controlled or pressure limited. Uh, the pressure control or pressure limited mode, the peak airway pressure circuit rather than either pressure can be set usually between 35 to 40 centimeter water. PEEP is usually increased, maintain functional residual capacity when respiratory compliance is low. The PEEP is one of the beautiful function in the mechanical ventilation that you are able to deal with the pneumonia and epiptasis patients, but it is really harmful for ARDS and, and emphysematic patients. It could be lethal. Please take care. Initial ventilator setup, that is the, my recommendation which I, I used with my patient in the last six months with COVID-19 patient, which has really worked with much of the patient. I got some problem with some patient who are didn't, who are didn't tolerate this. One, check the leaks. Two, check the O2 flow. Fractionated inspired oxygen between 0 0.6 to 1. Tidal volume from 5 to 10 milliliter per kilogram. I'm talking about adults. Rate 10 to 15 per minute. Inspiratory expiratory ratio 1 to 2, except with emphysematic patients. Peak pressure, 35 centimeter water or less, better, less. P 
deep between three to five centimeters of water. Sometimes you will need to increase this if you've got an acute cancer patient, pneumonia patients, and so on. Mode of ventilation. Controlled mechanical ventilation, CMV. Assist controlled mechanical ventilation, ACMV. Intermittent mandatory ventilation, IMV. Pressure support ventilation, PSV. Control mechanical ventilation, <clears throat> a preset number of breaths are delivered to supply all patient ventilatory requirements. This may be at preset of tidal volume, volume controlled, or at preset inspiratory pressure, pressure control. The assist control mechanical ventilation, patient trigger the ventilator to determine the respiratory rate, but as the controlled mechanical ventilation, a preset number of breaths are delivered in spontaneous respiratory rate falls below the uh, present level. The advantage of this <clears throat> provide near complete resting of ventilatory muscle. The patient didn't get, get it tired. Uh, can be used awake, sedated, or paralyzed patient. But this advantage is rapidly breathing patient can over induce severe uh, respiratory alkalosis and auto peep. Intermittent mandatory. Ventilation, preset mandatory rate is set, but patient is free to breathe spontaneously between set ventilator breath. Mandatory breath may synchronize with patient's spontaneous uh, effort is IMV to avoid mandatory breath occurring during spontaneous breath, which called stocking may lead to significant elevation of the tidal volume or airway pressure, which may lead to barotrauma trauma and pneumothorax. It's very dangerous. Pressure support uh, ventilation, preset inspiration, inspiratory pressure is added to ventilator circuit during inspiration in spontaneously breathing patients. The preset pressure should be adjusted to ensure adequate tidal volume. Advantage for this is avoid patient ventilatory asynchron uh, as before. Patient comfortable having full control over their ventilatory pattern and minute ventilation. Avoid breath stoking and auto peak. This advantage is spontaneous mode can't be used in heavily sedated and paralyzed uh, comatose patient, respiratory muscle fatigue can develop in pressure support in set to low. Uh, the references uh, for you is free for everyone who want to, uh, to read more. Every single word mentioned in this, in this lecture, you will find them in these 51 uh, references. Thank you very much for your following and السلام عليكم. هون سوفت. السلام عليكم. أنتم موجودين معي ولا أنا أتكلم مع نفسي؟ يعطيك العافية بروف صالح. الله يحييك. ثانك يو ثانك يو فيري ماتش. يو ويلكم. ما شاء الله. عندي كويستن شباب. ما شاء الله تبارك الله كانت المحاضرة ملمة كل شيء. بديت ما شاء الله من الفسيولوجي والديفيوجنز. وانتهينا بالتايبس اوف ذا فنتليشنز فيهمنا طبعا بالنسبه للاخوه اللي من البلاد اللي تابعوا المحاضره their questions really we are listening to them yeah. for their question and if anything clear uh, then we will put some comments after mm -hmm. that uh, for further uh, benefit to all of us inshallah as uh, prof sarah is available here with us they can participate, all of you. If anyone wants to ask questions, please.
um, the the lecture as PDF is already um, already done. I will send it to uh, Dr. Omar, uh, and Dr. Omar will um, will upload it uh, on the on the on the Facebook uh, site. Okay, Omar. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, we'll send it to you now. Okay. If you know, then I, no questions, will... really. Uh, after that, Dr. Hassan. أنا حسيت أن المحاضرة فيها a lot of information وفيها details really too much details including the neurological details and trauma وأعتقد the most of the audience we are expecting mainly will go through the cases with with how to prepare for COVID فهل الأخوة المستمعين معنا يشوفون ان نحن ممكن يكون محاضرة مجزأة for example one about the physiology and I am prefer for example the one of about the, uh, the, 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 the sitting of the, of the ventilator and نحاول قدر المصطلع لو فيه مكان واحد يصور الventilator اللي عندي مثلا انا بيكون prohibited ممنوع لكن لو بحاول اخرج بجهاز يوم صدفة ما حد يخلي حد من زملائي يصور ونتكلم على الventilator Connections, how to put it in the in the vision, how to see in the screen, how to prepare the 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 setting of it, كيف تختار المود. هل تشترون الطريقة هذه بتكون أحسن بس بتكون هذه عبارة عن كلها مسجلة من ثم the discussion. دكتور إبراهيم هل هي؟ فالمعنى فرق. نحن كان. هاي فرق الدكتور صالح. أيوة. دكتور إبراهيم نحن كان 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 رأينا في البداية. هذا الكلام اللي تفضلته به بس جات رسائل كثير من الشباب انه يبدو بده يبداوا اول بالبيزكس وبعدين نروح في في الكلام اللي تفضلت فيه انت بالعكس هذا الكلام اللي تفضلت فيه جدا رائع انا اشوفه برضه فعال وعملي جدا اي بس دحين حتى الان ما حد ما حصلت كومنت انا يعني يهمني طبعا بالنسبه لك بالنسبه لي بالنسبه للدكتور حسن أيه. عندنا نحن الانترنت اقوى عندنا امكانيات اكثر لكن كل هذا الجهد علشانهم هم فنحن يهمنا نسمع منهم يهمنا نسمع منهم في في نقاط مهمه حطها دكتور صالح وارقام مهمه جدا لو تركزوا موضوع هم يحطكم ارقام مثل 94 يحطكم مثل 88 تو 92 بالنسبه لاصحاب السي او بي هذه ارقام بتكون يعني مثل البيسك مثل اسم الشخص فابغى اسمع منكم يا جماعه الخير اذا كان اي واحد عنده كومنتس يبغى حاجه يبغى طريقه اسهل هل يبغى الاكسبلانيشن تكون مثلا The Arabic only, with, with some using of the terms only in English. How do you prefer the lectures to be, for example, one who is in support or 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 who is in support لكن هو يسوي المحاضرة الآن وهم بعد لونج داي بالنسبة لهم يعني من الساعة 5 إلى الساعة 5 العصر تقريبا دوام. فهذا علشانكم أنتم يهمنا أنتم الآن. I need your comments please. أنا ماني شايف الفيسبوك إذا آه حد منكم شايف الفيسبوك يقول لنا إذا في كومنتس موجودة على الفيسبوك ما ما في شيء أبو محمد أنا شايف الفيسبوك ما في طيب نحن بنرفع بنرفع لهم المحاضرة وهم بيشوفونها إذا توفر معاهم النت بشكل أطول يمكن في تيجي أسئلتهم مثلا على الصفحة هذا واحد سؤال هذا يقول واحد افضل طريقه فعلا عربي مع انجليزي مصطلحات وشرح عملي يكون كيف اضبط الجهاز في اغلب الحالات الشائعه يعني كان الشباب يبغوا النقاط العمليه نعم كيف يتعاملوا مع الجهاز كيف يتعاملوا مع الحالات Practical session. 
صحيح دكتور حسن انا اعتقد ان هذه المحاضره دكتور حسن فيها الوت اوف انفورميشن بالنسبه صحيح. لهم بيكون صعب يجمعونها كلها وبيحصلون فيها كثير من الانديكيشنز وبيحصلون فيها ان في يعني اتس 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 مور ديب فبالنسبه لهم ما بيقدرون يلحقوا كل شيء فا اي ثينك دي هاف تو ريد ات از بي دي اف ولا يستمعونها مره ثانيه بس دي هاف تو ريد ات اند تو ريد ذا نمبرز اند تو جو ثرو ذا بيسكس اوف ذا اوف ذا اوف ذا فيسيولوجي اوف ذا فنتيليشن وبعدها نرجع مره ثانيه للليكشر القادمه تبع الفنتيليشن وتكون بشكل ستبس فهذا بيكون افضل باذن الله انا افضل انها تلحق هذه هذه تكون عباره عن جامعه للكل عباره عن ملخص المحاضرات اللي بدي وليس هي البدايه لانها هذه بدات كامله تعتبر السميشن اوف ذا اول اوف ذا ليكشر ذات ويل كم ان شاء الله فانا اتفق بالطريقه اللي حطها واحد قاعد يكون كلام بالعربي لان احسب حساب للغه بالنسبه لهم خصوصا مع الانترنت بيكون شويه بطيء لكن الكلمه العربيه يقدر يفهم ايش يفهم حتى لو موصد واضحه يقدر يستنبط المستمع. ويفضل لو يكون في معنى الاكسس مثلا نخلي واحده بال بالسيشن هاو تو بريبير ذا فنتيليشن وواحده ثانيه مثلا للباي باب والسي باب من الديفينيشن والواي اوف ذا يوز وواحده مثلا محاضره بنخليها باذن الله ريجاردنج مثلا ال 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 وان تو بوت بيشن with the COVID on ventilation. What's the criteria for the ventilation in COVID? So I can the patient the normal, our patient had already with pre-existing, uh, uh, for example, lung disease, then the indication you have to have numbers, numbers. So the deterioration in the functional status or the deterioration in the conscious status قد يكون واحد لكن كارقام للاكسجين وغيره قد تختلف بالنسبه للشخص اللي عنده سي او بي دي وعنده كوفيد او شخص مثلا نورمال وعنده كوفيد متى احول هذا على على الفنتليشن ومتى اعطي فرصه فافضل انه بتكون نكشف بعد هذه والدكتور صالح ما شاء الله يعني ابدا استعداد وكلنا بيساعدهم وكلنا مستمعين له وهي اور ريفرنس ان ذيس فيلد وان شاء الله ايضا افضل الدكتور خالد حسن بن سهل يكون على علم بالموضوع هذا ويحضر معنا فيه ان شاء الله باذن الله ان شاء الله والوقت يمكن عشان يكون اللايف الكثير حضور يمكن نختار وقت ثاني ما ادري وش الانسب لهم بس انه نشوف نشوف مع الشباب المشكله ما حد ما حد ما حد يرد عليك في في المجموعات لكن نشوف ان شاء الله الله ييسر نحن املنا في اللي يحضرون يعني حتى لو حضرتوا قليل فانتم تاج راسنا انتم موجودين في البلاد واللي انتم تعانون واللي انتم جالسين فانتم عزيزين علينا صح ويهمنا انتم ونحن نقدر جهودكم صراحه ونحن بجنبكم و... ونستفيد منكم بالعكس نحن نستفيد منكم دكتور حسن برضو خلينا حماشين في الموضوع هذا للنهاية ويا ريت لو يعني تهيج تجتهد لنا تعمل لنا برضو حاجة عن الفيدياتريك لأنه صراحة لما قريت عن الفيدياتريك لقيت إنه عالم آخر تماما تماما عن عن أي شيء نحن نعرف فيا ريت والله لو تعمل لنا يوم كذا عن عن الأطفال موضوع مرة مرة انترستنج جميل بيدياتريك فنتريشن والاي سي يو معنا دكتور احمد بن محفوظ هو بيدياتريك اي سي يو راح نسلك معاه ان شاء الله ونسلك لنا المحاضره فيها وي ار فيري ثيرستي فور ذيس ثينكس جميل ان شاء الله باذن الله يعطيكم الف عافيه جميعا بارك الله فيكم والمحاضره مسجله والبروف ان شاء الله يحاول ينزلها ك بي دي اف لانهم يطلبون البي دي اف الحين رفعت على على الشات هنا على الشات رفعت البي دي اف كامل وعند عمر الله يجزاه خير ان شاء الله وهو بيرفعها ممتاز و... انا بطرحها في الصفحه الان البي دي اف جميل يعطيكم الف عافيه شكرا جزيلا لكم حفظ الله الجميع وجزاكم الله بارك الله فيكم حفظ الله وجيهكم جميع الله يحفظكم الف شكر لك دكتور صالح الف شكر لك دكتور صالح وجزاك الله خير شكرا على واجب و... الله يعافيك ان شاء الله شكرا دكتور حسن شكرا دكتور عمر
وشكرا للحاضرين اللي حضروا ويستمعون بقصد الفائده وال... ويفيدوا الناس هناك المحتاجين لهم نشكركم من كل اعماق قلوبنا